Welcome to another edition of Believe in Giants. Bob Papa, two-time Super Bowl champion, Carl Banks. Hopefully you're getting all your Christmas shopping done, your holiday shopping, but we got presents to unwrap as far as games are concerned. Four to go in the season. We'll do the preview of the Washington Commanders Sunday night game a little later in the week, but we got to digest what we witnessed the other day, Carl. And uh, that was just a good old-fashioned beatdown by the Philadelphia Eagles, and it just kind of shows you in the evolution of the Giants in year one of Joe Shane, Brian Dable, that despite that great start they got off to, there's a lot of work that has to be done as far as this roster is concerned. Oh, 100%. And um, I, I think I tweeted right after the game or later on that night, what we're seeing from the Eagles is three years, probably three plus years of good drafting, player acquisitions and player development and mm-hmm. good coaching. Um, this didn't happen overnight. They didn't microwave this season. This has been building. Um, and you could see all of the, all the positions across the board are really good players. And they were able to um, get this done over a period of time, but you could see, you know, how they drafted smart. The giants are not there yet. Um, but a lot of people in the league are not there yet either. So um, they got it. They, they got their butts beat and you know what? They should hold on to that taste. And I told coach Dable yesterday, like it's bitter, but hold on to it because um, you'll be revisiting this. Um, They're in the division. And I had that in 1984 on Monday night football, um, the San Francisco 49ers ran us out of our own building 31, 10, but it wasn't even that close. I think the 10 was garbage time. Right. And, um, Ronaldo Nehemiah had a career game, career game guy was a track star who I think he had played two years prior to that. And just didn't, he was unremarkable, but against us, he blew by us. And it was just, it was embarrassing. Uh, We ended up seeing those guys again in the playoffs. We lost that game too, but it was just the beginning of the beginning for us. Yeah. And I mean, and Dave's told us yesterday, I haven't been involved in one of those in a while. I mean, he's used to, he's Buffalo's been pretty good. Um, Of course, when he was at Alabama. Uh, they were administering those kind of beatings to yeah. people, not yeah. receiving those kind of beatings. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, Carl, we talk about this all the time, like margins. You know, I don't, I don't, the Giants weren't going to win that game, but there were opportunities in that game to at least make it a game or you know, try to you, steal it, get them into a few more mistakes. Right. I mean, like you have it, you're down seven, nothing, and they're, so arrogant. And I don't mean this in a negative way. It's an earned I, arrogance. Yeah. And and I like a lot of the people with the Eagles organization. I know Giants fans don't like when we say that stuff, but we get to know people yeah, as people, not just colors. And, um, you know, they go for it on fourth and seven at the Giant 41. It's seven nothing at this point. Mm-hmm. You know, J- Julian Love makes the smart football play and eliminates an interception from his brain and just says pass breakup means we get the ball at the 41. You know, who knows, you know, the, the, now you got a short field, maybe you got a chance to strike yourself, just make the game uncomfortable for them. Again, I'm not saying that's why they lost, but when they play this game this week and we'll get deeper into it later in the week, those plays have to be made the smart plays have to be made because now you're going to be fighting in your weight class this week. Can I talk a little bit about, uh, you know, I don't want to bring attention to it, but you know, we have so many great fans believe in giants, tell a friend to tell a friend. And then all the Mm -hmm. people that listen to us on Sunday and, and watch all of our TV shows with the giants, but there's this one lady and she's a passionate giants fan. And she's got this thing from Mike Kafka that like blows me away like 
terrible play calling, RPOs, all this other stuff. <laughs> Should we mention our Twitter handle by name? Well, sure, because we mentioned the entertainer when he gave us some good stuff, so we might as well. I mean, they follow us, they tag us in their their tweets, so they want us to talk about it. So it's it's at Barb loves, loves the GMAT. Yep. Yeah. All right, yeah. now she's a big fan. She's a great fan, but she has this thing, this hatred for Mike Kafka and what a terrible job he's doing. And then when the Giants posted the video of Dable's presser yesterday when he was asked about Daniel Jones, you know, the quote from Brian Dable was, he's good. I think he's done a nice job really since we got here. And then she makes a comment <clears throat> too bad Kafka hasn't done a good job helping him. And of course she tags us in there. Where's the RPO, the rollout, call some damn place to help him. No one gets deep, maybe slate once in a while. Well, Barb, we love you just like you love the G men and the big blue, but you're just wrong. Like if you go back and watch the coaches tape, the all 22 and, and Dave's mentioned this to us yesterday. And then you and I went back and looked at yeah. it. There was about four or five plays that were slam dunk home run, double move on Bradbury, double move on slay, double move on a safety where there were guys running wide open. Not not within a step. We're talking a couple steps. Yeah, like a five like yard opening. Running walk in touchdowns. So then go watch the coaches take. Did Kafka it, call a bad play there? No, they yeah. don't protect well enough. Daniel Jones, his back foot's hitting. He can't even set up to make the throw to some of these guys running wide open. Because the first thing he does when his back foot hits is he's got to shed somebody. He's got to avoid somebody. He has got to, he gets moved off his spot, and then the moment has passed, and then he's got pressure, and he's getting leaked out, and he's dumping it down to somebody. Yeah, and, and Barb, let's, let's just do this. Let's agree for you to do one thing. Become a smarter critic, right? Um, just to, to throw out there... And I say this with love. Bob and I both say this with love because we appreciate you as a Giants fan. But the hallmark of a Giants fan traditionally, now we're, we're digressing a bit uh, or regressing a bit as fans, but that they're smart and they're respected fans because when they come to the table with critiques, they kind of base it in, in something. But when you constantly beat the same drum, RPO, 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 and then you say, hey, Mike Kafka stinks. He's not a good play caller. Well, do a little research. There are plenty of people out there that can help you uh, as an observer. And I, you know, I, I love um, Dan Schneier and Nick Filato. Um, I like uh, the guy breaking tackles. Uh, they do a lot of film breakdown. Yeah, even, even our own guy, John Schmelk. John Schmelk. They break like down crazy. film. And they post their stuff and their comments. Now, and they also do, do a little research on what an RPO looks like and what it takes to run that. You've got their components that have to put, an RPO puts somebody on the defense in conflict. The conflict is on our offense right now. Lining up, trying to block guys, you don't, they can't hold up in certain situations. So you can't run the RPO without getting your quarterback killed. So do yourself a favor and do your, our timeline a favor. Come with something uh, better than we need more RPOs. Tell us why we need more, more RPOs. Tell us what an RPO is, right? Look at some of the plays that Kafka called that have guys open and then go back and look at what the protection is. And if the protection's there and the quarterback missed it, that critique is fine. We see that all the time. We pointed it out in Seattle um, on a double right, move as, by Darius Slayton. As you said, in Seattle, Daniel Jones played his worst 
was it quarter of football? Quarter of football, yeah. Of the year. He was he was he was not good in the fourth quarter of the Seattle game. Yeah. So we will ex- you know, we 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 welcome all comments, but just like it's exhausting. You're sh- you should be exhausted. Just constantly harping on the same RPO, RPO. That's not the solution when you don't have the the talent up front or the consistency up front. You're going to get your quarterback killed. So you know, look at the film, follow um, Dan, Nick, John Schmelk, and then come back after watching the tape, and they'll help you. Just by looking at them and and their comments, they'll help you better educate yourself on what you're looking at. Because the default is not Kafka. The default is not RPO. Now let's get back to what the defaults are. The defaults are horrible linebacker play, right? Horrible oh, run defense. Oh, we're going we're going to the defense. I I, w- I didn't think we were finished with the little box. If anyone who watches the Coach Dable show that we do on all the Giants media platforms that I think gets released on Thursday, like your mm-hmm. strategy segment on the Telestrator, you draw that box. Left yeah. guard, center, right guard. If that does not get better, the Giants have a lot of problems because mm-hmm. every any quarterback the greatest of the quarterbacks, they can deal with the edge if you can step up in the pocket. But if you can't step up and they're barreling in there, oh my lord! Yeah. Anyway, go ahead, go back to the go. But listen, you're a two-time Super Bowl champion. You were named to the All '80s Decade Team by the Pro Football Hall of Fame as a linebacker. You know defense. Please I do. go ahead. And I know offense because I had to prepare for them. That's right. Um, of course. That's the, that's the other thing I always laughed about. Well, you know, he's a defensive guy. Yeah, yeah. but he spent his career the reason trying to we're figure so out. Good, yeah, the reason <laughs> we're so good is because we knew offense, right? Of course. Um, Giants have – they've got a problem. I mean, listen, I, I went on the Twitter and I praised uh, Jalen Smith because he made some phenomenal plays. And people were pointing out to me, nope, 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 nope. He, he's still the same guy. In a lot of respects, he is. But they, they have a problem. They have a defensive problem. I feel bad for Wink because it's there are certain things he can't do to help his players. And I call Wink a wizard. But if you ain't holding up, you ain't, you, he can call whatever he wants and it ain't going to work. And this giant defense, and I know this is a different era in the NFL, but it is not okay to give up 200 yards a game rushing, 300 yards a game rushing. It's not okay to give up three, four, five plays in a single game of 20 yards or more. I don't give up. You know what? What era of football this is. You know, this is not, the game is not one dimensional. The reason why teams are getting 200 yards a game is because some people just concede that, well, we're just going to stop the pass. Well, that part of the game never comes. I know that's not Wink Martindale. But if you can't be disciplined enough, to, to be in your gaps. Like Boston Scott squirting around and just takes off 30, 40 yards. And you got guys all bundled up. If it was a grenade, they'd all be dead because nobody's <laughs> fitting. They're all just like, it's like youth clustered soccer. together. Yeah. It's like looks youth like soccer a, where they all yeah. run to the ball. Like, <laughs> yeah. And they just all clustered up. Well, you can't help your defensive linemen. If you don't have the right fits, your defensive lineman can't help you if you don't have the right fits. As defensive lineman, if you don't play your blocks well, you're screwing up your smaller defensive backs and linebackers. A lot of this is lack of focus from players, lack of discipline from players. And I'm not telling you that it's all Jalen Smith because Jalen Smith had some plays. 
I mean, he, 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 there's a red area throw that um, Jalen Hurts had to make. And I mean, from when you draw it up as perfect pass coverage, Smith got the right read, stepped in the window. He jumps because he thought he had an interception instead of waiting for the ball to be released. That's my only crit, uh, critique of that. But Jalen Hurts had to double clutch that ball. He completed it because Hurts was in the window. He had to wait another tick for that receiver to clear the window because on timing, if that ball's thrown on timing, Hurts, may, I mean, um, Jalen Smith makes that interception. Micah McFadden is young. But I'm going to tell you, all young players learn the fundamentals of run fits and pass fits. Don't just run around like your hair on fire. I'm not impressed with that shit. Like running around, he, he, he even when he makes a mistake, he makes it full speed. No, that's not okay. Because making a mistake full speed means you might be 10 yards out of a play versus two yards out of a play because your hair is on fire you're going the wrong direction right um they got a problem this it, it's it's not okay to give up the amount of yards rushing you can't concede everything and i'll tell you what philadelphia did the giants a favor because they didn't run the ball in the first half they decided to pick on the the defensive backs which Again, you've got to focus on technique when you are a, a, a second level or a third level um, defensive back. Second team or third team is what I'm saying. Because what Wink can do, he can put a Band-Aid on a few things. He can script up, hey, we're going to get there with this blitz. Just be close to your receiver, right? We see one play, and you'll see it in our strategy breakdown. Um, you get everything straight. Everybody's got their guy covered. One defensive back decides to look back at the quarterback. Guess where the quarterback throws the ball? Um, and that's on a fourth down play, similar. So it's a bigger effort when you're – Talent is not your first team talent. Your second and third team talent has to stay locked in and focus. When your first team talent, Julian Love, who you have a, a really great football IQ, it's a little more effort when you know you're, you're not getting many chances to make a decision of situational awareness and understanding what's the best play, right? And I get why you were going for the interception. Devontae Smith didn't make a great play. You made a bad play. Mm -hmm. Like literally you were three options available to you. It was the one that you chose that you just misjudged the ball. Uh, the second one, because you were there on time in great anticipation, if you want to go for the interception, go for the interception through the receiver. Or three, just knock it down. They weren't going to call a penalty on you because you were there. You could have played the ball right into the receiver and blown him up. Um, but that's the situation of awareness. And then, so the result of that is another touchdown, not a tackle after he caught the ball. Um but this defense right now, I don't care if they're punching in their weight class or not. The other guys get paid and they look at the freaking cluster of players that all run to one area. Nobody has a fit and they know, well, you know, you got one seam. There's nobody going to be on the back end of that because they're all just going to chase their tails into one area. And it's not OK. It's it's just not OK. And you can say, well, teams are passing the football. Well, you can't get beat at both. You got to be good at something, even as second and third team players, which the Giants have a lot of in their defensive backfield. Um, it's not okay. And they're looking, all you got to do is be where you're supposed to be. Read your keys that I know that. Uh, these co this coaching staff does a really good job of prepping their players. Do that and watch and see the results. And, and then 
The bad part about it is when they do have those run fits, it looks great. And if that, again, if you get to your assignment and every gap is where every defensive player should be and they gain four yards, that's just perfect. Because that ain't what the teams are expecting against your defense. Right. They're expecting 15, 20, 30, 40-yard runs. Get where you're supposed to be. If you can get them to line up and run another down that's not first, you that's a win for your defense, especially in the run game. But every time they run the ball, it's 8, 10, 12, 30, 40-yard chunks. That ain't acceptable. It's not. And you will not win this next game if you can't play better run defense. Because it's too much it's too much of a task. And we talk about how with the lack of uh, playmaking receivers on offense that they have to script it. And sometimes it's a burden scripting it, right? Uh, because they don't have a guy that can go make a play. They do in Slayton, but that alpha that can make it anywhere, right? The same holds true for Wink Martindale. There were moments where the blitz gets through and the receiver's running wide open versus zone defense. Uh, there are safety corners that don't see the sticks. Receiver catches the ball in front of the sticks, then they come up to make a tackle. They're within two feet. Well, close the gap. You know, they, they draw it up. You get a player free. If the quarterback has to pull the ball down, that's a victory for you. Sure. Um, so, and I, and I read what Dexter Lawrence said, um, they do a good job of watching film, but he's calling on all his guys to watch a little more, to be a little yeah. more critical of themselves. Um, this is it. This is the season finale in terms of, of, of what you can, you, what you can be playing for in three weeks. Now, listen, I know the X, ex- <laughs> it's really hard, right? They got seven wins. They got off to a fast start. They shocked a lot of people. They beat playoff teams like mm-hmm. Tennessee and Baltimore. And, you know, we know Green Bay's having a down year this year, but, you know, it was still Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. They sure. got, so they were a different team when they were winning those games because they had Sterling Shepard. They had Wandell Robinson. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, they had a Dory Jackson and Xavier McKinney. And all. so they're now down a lot of bodies. But with that said, Carl, Look, we all want the Giants to make the playoffs. It would be so good for the program in year one. And I think with Joe Shane and and his staff and what Coach Dable and his staff have done are remarkable. But we also have to – I hear fans tell me, well, man, you get up to seven wins that fast. You don't make the playoffs. It's an act failure. I mean, that's – hey, wait a second. Look at this. People can't see it. But this is the Giants' defensive depth chart, Okay. This is the Giants' offensive depth chart, okay? Now, you start reading through the names that they're asking to play important roles. So many of these players will not be on the Giants next year. Many of them were not on the roster in training camp. Yeah, I mean, Nick McLeod's a waiver claim. Right, you're asking him to play significant. Jason Pinnock was a waiver claim from the Jets. You're asking him to play significant roles. Tony Jefferson was let go by Baltimore. Zion Gilbert was on your practice squad. Uh, Rodarius Williams, even though he was inactive last week, you know he was injured last year. Tamon Fox is an undrafted free agent. Vernon Butler is another free agent signing in the middle of the season. I mean, and the list goes on. Henry Mondo, you know. Jalen Smith, forget about Jalen Smith, 2019, the cowboy hype machine. He was a pro bowler, you know, that, that sure. forget about it. you're asking Micah McFadden as a fifth round pick to step in there and be a stud. And then, and the Fabian Moreau right now is your best corner. Okay. He's your best cover corner. Fabian Moreau is another guy that was in camp with Houston. Right. And then was with Atlanta last year and you picked him up as a friend. Like at some point, people have to pump the brakes on the reality of what 
what they're rolling out there with and celebrate the fact that they even have gotten the seven wins at this point. Yeah. Remember where you started, right? And listen. I mean, Isaiah Hodgins and Darius Slayton, who they everyone thought was going to get rid of him, and he had to take a pay cut just to stay on the team. He took a $1.5 million pay cut. Smart move by Darius Slayton because this was his best opportunity to establish himself. But Isaiah Hodgins is the next go-to guy who is a mid-season pickup off the practice squad of Buffalo. And think about that, folks. When you don't have a significant margin of error because your talent won't allow you. And when the coaches scheme it up, both sides of the ball, the biggest ask, and they're not scheming it up for all pros, by the way. They're scheming it up based on what these guys can do. The least those players can do is be where they're supposed to be. Wide receivers, left guard, right guard, don't jump off sides, don't whiff a block, do what you're supposed to do. They've designed it so that you can have some level of of success or or probability of success because you're still going against uh four all pros up front two all pros in the on the corner cornerback position and they scheme it up and you got Darius Slayton running by guys and can't get it blocked right um or conversely in the Washington game with 125 to go in a tie game after Washington tied it, Mike Kafka called the perfect play. Mm -hmm. A blown coverage, and Darius Slayton could have had a 75-yard touchdown catch. Make the play. And, and instead, he makes it an acrobatic play that should have at least been um, a 30-yard 30, 30 40-yard catch. Mm -hmm. And instead, you got nothing out of it. Then you, you got Zippo out of that. And then the second play... Listen, that should have been interference. Slayton should have kept pressing inside to make it more obvious when the Washington players shoved him out of bounds. But you're not going to get that call that Justin Jefferson's going to get. Right. Or Jamar Chase is going to get. Or Tyreek Kill gets that call every day of the week. Slayton's got to force him to make the call. Sure. But those are two plays that should have worked. Yep. Um, anyway, yeah. I, I'm so off my soapbox now. I, I'm not. I'm not. Because... You have to expect more of yourself. Special teams, you're awful. You're a liability. Man. Because understand this. When you're not as good on the offense and defensive side of the ball, your special teams have to factor in. Field position is everything. Everything. And... Philadelphia. And the, deplete, the, 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 the depleted roster injury excuse doesn't hold water. And I'll tell you why it doesn't hold water. Go. Was the roster really any better the last two or three years? Right. Right. And the special teams was better. Yeah. Um, when you score a point against someone like Philadelphia, you can't turn around and give them the freaking ball at the 50 yard line because there's a big return. Worst you got to go down that. there, stop him and make them earn it, dude. It's, it's, you know, you can, I, I can identify with people that want the coaches to do more, but they ain't got, but what they got, but the players can be better at what they do. Some, some can be better at what they do. Others just be where you're supposed to be, right? Mm -hmm. um, Aziz Ojolari is coming off of injury. He's making an impact, and then he goes airborne on a quarterback. Quarterback breaks contain, makes a big play. That was the first Washington game. Um, yeah, it was the fourth and four or three, whatever yeah. it was. Interception hits you in the hand, catch it, because you may not get that opportunity again. Um, I'm excited for Sunday. I'm excited for the possibility of them going to the playoffs uh, because it's it's right there in front of them. 
but they've got to do a lot of things better within their their scope of ability. Um, I listen, Jalen Smith. I I don't think outside of his family he has a bigger fan than me. But goddamn, like I need you to be locked in because you're the more experienced linebacker of the entire group. So you can't be the guy who's flying around full speed in the wrong direction. You got to be locked in because when you're locked in, you're really good. He's got, and you know, again, we have these, you know, the, the fans say, well, he's not quick enough. He's not, guy's got a twitch out of this world. Like he can, he's a quick twitch guy. He's quick enough. He's fast enough. He's just often wrong. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what's ha- I'll tell you one thing that happens when Jalen Smith is in the game, which is something that the Giants have been routinely abused at by other teams is running backs in space making big plays. Yeah. When Jalen Smith's in the game, think about the last couple of years and how many times backs just got isolated on linebackers and it was like not even close to the right. same zip code and a big play. That's not happening against the Giants when, especially when he's on the field. And but see, that's that's my love hate with him. Is that he's got to he's got to lock in. He's got to breathe. Like you're you're quick enough that if you're a half a step slow and you're half a step slow in the right direction, you're still going to meet the lineman at the line of scrimmage. Cause yeah. you're, he's, he's, he's a quick twitch guy. And, but, but you can't be a hundred percent in the wrong direction. I'd rather be going down the wrong way on a one way street slow than a hundred miles an hour. Cause it's going to be catastrophe. Um, this team and we're critical, but we do know what we're talking, what we're dealing with, right? We're talking about, a, you know, a second level roster that, in a league of parity, they give opportunities to make playoffs. Mm-hmm. Teams with losing records that can win enough games can make the playoffs, and playoffs are good. For every yeah. nutcase that says the playoffs will create unreasonable expectations no stop you're it. out of your freaking mind yeah i mean listen uh, are you giants fans sick of hearing about oh we better not win this game late in the year because it's, it's gonna, gonna f up our draft yeah yeah um well yeah what you want i mean and i can tell you from experience you want this playoff opportunity because it sets your program on a path. And I, I and I I want this team to go to the playoffs because then you as fans will have expectations of doing it the next year. And then you can hold your general manager and your coaching and your scouting to a higher standard when this season is over with and say, okay, we made the playoffs with this roster. We need X, Y, and Z. Right. Yeah. Instead of spitballing it, okay, you got a playoff team at an NFL level, and they will deserve to go if they go. But right. then after that, wherever they exit, now you guys who like to prospect uh, with the Giants need, right? Now you need to get to the next level. Right. You'll be like, we need this. We need this. We need this. Remember, remember the uproar. Daniel Jones rookie season when the Giants won in Washington and he threw the touchdown pass in overtime to Caden Smith Mm -hmm. and the uproar from the Giants fans was just cost us Chase Young just cost us Chase Young well listen Chase Young won the defensive rookie of the year his rookie year in 2020 Chase Young went to the Pro Bowl He started 15 games. He had 32 tackles. He had seven and a half sacks. He had 12 hits on the quarterback. And then he played nine games last year, and he had one and a half sacks, and he got hurt. And he hasn't played yet this year because the knee taking a long time to recover from. 
So while you were all bitching and moaning about the fact that you won a meaningless game, guess what wound up dropping in your lap? Andrew Thomas. Yeah. I don't know. Looks to me like the Giants got a pretty good bargain with that one by winning that that game in Washington. So, yeah, I'm all about winning, not playing for draft position, and if this team can manufacture a way to get in the playoffs and get a taste of it. Just yeah, you just need it. a taste. The weekend going into a playoff game, you don't know what that does to the psyche of players. You want, like... Winning and making the playoffs are good. I don't give a damn what anybody says. Um, it's good. And everybody that now, you know, this whole, oh, they've been rebuilding for 10 years. No, they haven't. They've been renovating for 10 years on a rotten foundation. This is a total reconstruction. And if you can get ahead of schedule with your reconstruction, you're going to be in pretty good shape in two to three years. Year two will be even better than this year because they have better players, more money. Year three, there should be an even higher expectation. And I'm talking each step of the playoffs. But if they can get to this playoffs, it will do wonders for not only the players, but you as fans. Because you know it's not, well, they made playoffs this year, but they're not going to make it next year. Well, they had a lot of injuries this year, and they're still in the playoff hunt, so that won't be an excuse. But the players have got to do a better job. And right. You know what? And people say, oh, Carl, you never criticize management. Uh, you always think it, it is the players. It is the players. And, and I'm being realistic at what the talent level is. I'm just asking the guys who can to do. Those who can't, don't break it. If it ain't broke, don't break it. Just be where you're supposed to be. But the guys who can must do. Right. Because you got a staff uh, that knows what they're doing. And I can tell you why those who can must do and those who can't don't break it. Dallas Cowboys had zero sacks against the Houston Texans. They are one win team. They're the worst team in the league. Yeah. And that was one of the best pass rush teams in the league. They got zero sacks. Zero against what? Who's their quarterback? Can you name him? And Davis Mills was back in there. So those who can must. You'll end up when you're fighting in your weight class. Just do what you're supposed to do. They've already accounted for the deficiencies in their in, in their personnel. They're game planning based on what they have. And based on what they have, if you can get behind all pro Darius Slay, if you can get behind James Barrett, Bradbury on several occasions, then just do your job up front, right? We know it ain't easy, but they already accounted for that. They've schemed it up. Don't whiff a block. Right. Right. A corner is blitzing and you're an offensive lineman. Don't make a little contact with him. Make a lot of contact with him because he don't want to run into you anyway. And you get your place. But that's what it really comes down to. Right. Hey, folks, basketball is back. Bet online remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs. You'll find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, game trends at Bet Online as your continued source for all sports wagering. Bet Online features live betting, free contests, giveaways all season long. Always the fastest, easiest way to bet your favorite sports. NFL, NBA, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, or even golf. Head to betonline.ag. Get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Use the promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your awards bet online where the game starts. All right, Carl. Um, we're going to be back on Friday mm -hmm. to do a full breakdown preview of the Washington Commanders. Anything else to get off your chest here before we say tell a friend to tell a friend? No, nope, I'm good. Make sure you tell. So remember, folks, perspective perspective four games to go got a chance to make the playoffs enjoy it and Be make excited. sure that you 
continue to educate yourself and study so you can see the big picture of what they're saying. So for Carl Banks, what, how do we like to end this again? I forgot. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Yeah, buy one of those damn T-shirts for Christmas, please. Shop.believe.com. For Carl Banks, I'm Bob Papa. I, I am shameless when it comes to that stuff. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Believe in Giants.